Hey guys, how are you? It's Dana Zim's Guitars in Mesa, Arizona. Today's guitar we get to restring. Man, I'm glad you guys are here with me today because sometimes this gets to be a bit boring. But we have a Fernandez. Pretty sure this is a made in Japan. Let's take a look at this thing. Fernandez, I don't know too much about them, but this is a made in Japan. And boy, this arm is really in there. But there we go, we got it out. Screws in, had some sort of Teflon tape around it or something. But let's see if we can get this, uh, okay. Gotta take the back blade off. So this kind of stuff happens. Every guitar. You wouldn't believe how many stickers I pull off of guitars. Uh, it's, it's sad. People put stickers on their guitars. You know, it because they know it's theirs. They're allowed to do whatever the hell they want to their guitar. So they'll, they'll throw stickers on there. They got favorite bands. You know, um, I spent years in a punk rock band called the Fed Ups. And we, we, of course, when you're a punk rock band, the only thing you can do is hand stickers out to people. And it felt really good to see one of my band stickers on somebody else's guitar. We would, you know, play gigs where four or five bands would get together and play the same night and, and uh, you know, put a show together. And so you would hand all the buddies in your other bands your stickers and, and you know, you'd put their stickers on uh, your guitar and vice versa. So it was always kind of a fun thing to do. And it was cool to see your sticker on somebody else's guitar. Sometimes stickers come off super clean. Sometimes they're like these that are, they're not vinyl. These stickers are uh, paper-like, really hard to get off. And I'm pretty sure that this guitar spent a large portion of its life in Japan, even though these stickers that are on here, what's it say, Lunacy? Lunacy, that's a good name. And something kill, so it's in English. Okay, these are tough. So when things get stuck in there, when the strings get stuck in there, I take a small little Allen wrench and, and push it down in there like that so that the string comes through easy because the balls get stuck in there. All right, so to get these stickers off, we have to just lay a wet rag on them for a while and then peel them off. So let me put some water on my rag. Okay, so the stickers are off. I used a bunch of, I, I put a wet rag over the sticker, peeled the paper off, and then I took some glue be gone. So, one other thing that I usually do is sometimes I'll just spray uh, cheap dollar store furniture polish. Spray some of that on there. I find myself a lot of days, because I am a used guitar shop, I'm just shining stuff up trying to make it look new, trying to make it look presentable. Uh, it's hard to sell a used guitar with stickers on them, even though that was a cool band sticker. But it had to go, unfortunately. I never leave stickers on a guitar. Unfortunately, right here, we got a pretty bad little buckle rash going on right there. And, uh, one thing that I don't like the looks of right here is the claw is uh, kind of screwed in sort of at an angle. So I'm gonna screw this one side in and kind of straighten that out. Sometimes I like these springs to go to the center. You know, there's different arguments to be said, but where some, you can have all three of these springs and sometimes you put the ones on the outside inside a little bit on these little hooks right here. Cause I actually saw an old, old Fender, you know, manual that was in a guitar 
like a Fender sort of spec sheet kind of thing, some instructions on how to take care of your guitar. And Fender, in this old uh, magazine or whatever it was, it was like a brochure, right? You buy a guitar and it comes in the case. It tells you to put these springs on the inside if you only use three of them. I've seen other guys say, well, the tension on these springs then, since it's stretched a little longer to get over here, it's going to be tighter than your center string. So if you do it this way, you have equal tension on these springs. You know, who knows, right? I don't know if it matters that much, especially on a guitar like this that, uh, you know, it's not like a Floyd Rose kind of bridge or anything. I think on a guitar like this, uh, it probably makes no difference. But you never know. Leave it in the comments if you guys can argue that fact if you want to. Fernandez Guitars, uh, made in Japan. If you're over in Japan, over in the Far East anywhere, you probably see these things everywhere, even Australia. You probably, if you're in guitar shops in, Austra in Australia, like in the blues, right? Shane from in the blues. He probably sees Fernandez guitars everywhere. Guitar Search Saturdays. And, uh, but here in America, we see them, but not that often, especially over in the East Coast. I don't think you see them very often, but in, um, like the, the West Coast, like Portland area, maybe up in Seattle, I think you see a lot more of them just because, uh, it's kind of, it's a closer port to, Japan, like Portland, and some of the Japanese, a lot more of the Japanese stuff end up being imported over to the uh, West Coast, you know, Portland, Seattle area, stuff like that. All right, so these frets look brown and dirty and ugly, so I'm gonna polish the frets up a little bit. I have thousand grit sandpaper that I folded over a couple of times and I have my fret guard right here. And so I'm just gonna lightly hit these with thousand grit sandpaper. And it uh, makes a big difference. It's super easy. It's not taking any of the material off of the frets. It's just kind of taking the top layer of dirt off of them and it brings them a nice shine without needing them to be recrowned or anything like that. Doesn't level them. Just kind of takes the top layer off of there. Okay, so here's the frets that I hit right here. And then right here, you guys can see, this is the frets that I haven't cleaned yet. So it makes a big difference, just a few swipes with a thousand grit, sometimes you can go 800 grit, but uh, it, it really cleans them up nicely. Again, this one I just kind of went over and cleaned. This one's still dirty. Then when you get up into this neighborhood, you need your other guard. Here it is, here's the smaller size. So where are we at? Right here. Cleaning your frets like this is very important when you uh, are playing your guitar. You can feel it. When you go to do a string bend, it should be super glassy. Super slinky. All right, there's that. Then we can just put a little lemon oil on a rag and just kind of uh, throw it on this fingerboard. Let it soak in a little bit for a second. And then we'll wipe that off there, all the rest of it. And that fretboard is looking good. Okay, before we put strings on it, you always want to test the guitar's electronics. 
and we can just tap it with a little screwdriver as far as tapping. Okay, oh, we have a problem. We, we have a pro Houston, we have a problem. Our volume knob. Our volume knob's messed up, so let's get in here into the back of the guitar here. Let's see if we might be able to see what's going on there. Maybe we can fix this up. You know, guys, big shout out to Dave's World of Fun Stuff up in Canada. We all watch his videos. Uh, he's the uh, he's the official old school restring channel. Shows you how to restring guitars and uh, setting stuff up. And uh, but I do it because I have a guitar shop, right? And so I have to clean these guitars anyhow. So why not make a video about this? Okay, so I'm looking inside here. All the solder joints look nice in here. Uh, that's the important one right there. Looks good, the whole thing just seems loose. One thing that you can do is to take some spray cleaner and you spray these pots out and watch your eyes, don't get this stuff in your eyes. Give it a good spray. And sometimes that'll loosen this up and get you back in the game. This whole pot wants to turn. Let me show you that when I turn. See, the whole pot wants to turn. So let me take the... Take the volume off. Sometimes I will just stick a screwdriver in here like this and I'll kind of work my way around. Because these things break really easily. So you kind of work your way around it until you get it under it there like that. So, okay. Let's see why this is doing that. Okay, what I'm going to try. Let's go ahead and see if I can tighten this up. I'm trying to hold the pot at the same time. Okay. That sucker is just stuck. Well, it's tight in there now, but that thing is just stuck. I can't even turn it. I'm not sure what to do here. There it goes, a little. There it goes. You spray it again. We might be able to save this one. If not, I'm going to have to change it out. Good feeling when you can save something. Turn it all the way up. I'm gonna put the put this back on there. My son does all my video editing. And he's like, Dad, you're whispering again. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Okay, and just for good measure, we'll go ahead and hit this a couple of times. I've never seen this stuff 
hurt the finish on anything. I'm not saying it, it won't, but uh, All right, so I think I got this working, so hopefully when I plug it in, it will work and function properly. Okay, let's see what happens now. I'm gonna tap on this. Awesome, it's working. Kind of a strange pack of strings today. Aurora, extra long life, electric guitar strings. 10 through 46. I haven't used these before. They are sealed up nice. Should be nice and fresh. Boy, they're really in here. Maybe I should do this. Cut these babies open. These are supposed to be extra bright as far as color. Smooth these tuners down a bit. I can't get him out of the packaging. Okay. The A string looks like a point zero three. D string is a point zero two six. It's at 24 frets. That's unusual for a Strat style guitar. Very unusual for a Strat style guitar. Unless maybe it's like an Ibanez. Some of these Fernandez, I guess they were kind of super shredders kind of guitars. Oh, look at this thing. Strings are kind of, kind of cool. The B string looks to be a point zero one three at thirteen. And then a zero point one zero for the high string, high E string. It's a ten. Ten out of ten.
Thank mm-hmm. you.